Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week, I'm very excited to welcome my longtime friend and longtime entrepreneur, David Wooten. With us, as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. Jeff, I finally get where I've been going to. And I want to share a quote with you, and, and excuse me for having to take out my phone, but I hate to misquote somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. that came up recently. Your purpose is not the thing that you do. It's the thing that happens in others when you do what you do. And that quote is by Caroline Leaf, my friend, uh, Francine Favre, uh, probably said that wrong, but anyway, uh, posted that and I saw it and, and it really meant a lot because a, a, over my whole life, my business life in particular, there's been a lot of light bulbs that have gone off mm-hmm. and some of them were really bright. And then later I realized it was just for the moment. It was where I needed to be in that moment. And so that changing and that moving, and I've always been looking for how do I fulfill my purpose and realize that that's not even as much about the job that I have as it is about the impact that I have on others. No doubt about it. I would say you finally get it (laughs) because too many of us, we're worried about status or um, accomplishment but the true accomplishment happens in how we impact others and how they change. It's the way I end every show. How do you make people different and better just because they met you, you know? Right. Well, we'll get to that at the end. Okay. Thanks <laughs> but, for the but I, I hear what you're saying. That's, that's beautiful. So, so let's talk about how that came to be just because you've, you've had some several entrepreneurial ventures and, and you've done a lot of good out there. I used to believe that an entrepreneur was a business owner. Mm -hmm. And now I believe that everyone is an entrepreneur or at least has the opportunity to be. When we look at the job that we have, whether we're getting a W2 paycheck, whatever it is, W9, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever we have, if we take that opportunity to look at it as, are we creating something and are we making a difference? We become an entrepreneur. When I was in the service, Many, many, many years ago. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It seems like, right? I remember my first sergeant major. I was getting frustrated because there were me and three other privates that were in my squad, uh-huh. and all the work was getting put on me. All the all the difficult tactical work stuff was getting put on me, and I got so frustrated. He pulled me on one day and he said, "Wooten, I got to tell you this." He said, "You're starting to slack," and I started complaining about these other guys. No, uh-huh. he says. I'm not talking about them. You have to keep going. I promise you, the better you do, the more you're going to get used that way. And that's going to happen. And you may even get looked over at times and it's unfair. But your best chance to succeed is to keep pushing it, keep pushing it, keep doing and make it happen. Yeah. Man, don't give up. Yeah, never give up. I want to make sure that we said this correctly because... I don't know that everybody out there is actually entrepreneurial, but I do believe that everybody is a business owner. Does that sound more right with what you're you're saying? That that sounds more correct. I think I think we're all because some business owners are not entrepreneurial either. Correct. Right. And you know, myself, I don't want to own a business that's not changing and moving. Yeah, that's correct. just staying correct. in the same spot. And some people do, and that's beautiful. You, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong you, you with need that. The, you need that, right? Yeah. I want something where I feel like I'm being creative and developing no matter what I'm doing, whether it's owning a business or now, actually, I, I'm i back to a W-2 job. And I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's, you know, it gives me an opportunity to serve others in a way without some of the stress and some of the things that go along with being a business owner yep. that maybe remove you from that opportunity. One thing that you said to me earlier, it's w- w- when you become a business owner, if you don't change and if you're not changing and developing the people that you have on your team, then you're just maintaining. And and the truth to me, you and I, we're not maintainers. Not at all. We're builders. We're right. growers. Right. And that really is the mindset you have to have. But what I'm hearing from you is you you taken all the lessons you've learned throughout your entrepreneurial journey, and now that you are a 10, 10, you said ten nine. I'm a W two employee. Uh, now. You're a W two employee now, right. right? But it's still David Wooten Incorporated. It, if I'm hearing you right, 
You're absolutely hearing me right. And yeah, yeah. that is that is what I wanted to come and make clear today for everybody. When you're thinking about, I want to be a business owner, thinking about what that really means. Do you really want to be a business owner? I know a designer that opened a company and has multiple companies under that company, but she really doesn't want to be the CEO. Yeah. She wants yeah. to design. You know, and myself, I went into... This is still a long time ago, not quite all the way back to the Army, but I worked for a company uh, out of Lake Charles, U.S. Unwired, and we were a Sprint PCS affiliate, mm -hmm. and the Sprint, the digital was taken off, and the analog company was falling apart, and they came in and told me I was selected to captain the Titanic, because that part of the business was dying. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was dying. And what we did, me and a team, uh, can't take all credit for anything I've ever done. We created a new product called Big Mouth, which was the first unlimited billable plan on cell phones in the country. If you look at Straight Talk Wireless today, that's bas basically a replica of Big Mouth, down to the colors. So you and your team in Lake, little old Lake Charles, Louisiana, right. with Sprint, created basically unlimited Wireless. A billable, unlimited cell phone plan. Yeah. Talk, talk, talk all you want. Talk, talk, talk now. Texting wasn't quite as big as it is now, so yeah, a little texting sure, sure. didn't hurt anybody. And and the numbers worked, and we put it into action, and it blew up. And that company went from having a negative $5 million, that's how much they lost in the first quarter of that year, oh, to lady. the end of the first quarter of the next year at a plus $13 million. And it's not even about the numbers, though. It's about the creating, well- it is for the board and those guys, but yeah, yeah you correct, know, correct. But for me, it was about the teamwork that went into creating an idea, taking that idea from concept to reality, and putting it into the market and watching it grow. Yeah, just yep. unbelievable. That that's what I want to do. I want to do and things th like this that. This is what I, what I'm hearing. This is kind of a light bulb moment. Oh, I get it. I finally get it. Here at Company Growth Academy, we've begun teaching 20-minute growth strategies. They're free, they're fast, and they're full of information to help you grow your company. For more information and to sign up for our advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. Let's get it. Creating and, and being creative, it's, it's part of what fuels you. Yes. Whether you're an employee with Sprint or an offshoot of Sprint, or you know your current employment, and I can tell you throughout your your entrepreneurial journey, it was always about being creative. And what I want to make sure that everybody hears, because I'm hearing it, is you've you've got to figure out what charges your battery, and yes. what what gets you moving, and how you can be inspirational and make an impact on other people. Because if you don't, and you let just because I love business owners, I love entrepreneurs, I love everybody, but I do think we're all kind of business owners. We've got to figure out what really does charge our batteries so we can make the biggest impact. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I made, and I believe that wisdom comes from all of life experiences that we pay attention to, that we allow yeah, ourselves yeah, to learn correct, from, correct. you know, whether they're, they're failures or their victories, doesn't matter. And we take that. But one of my things that I learned the most from, from, you know, my business venture, and it's hard to even say it was a failure because look, we were in business for 18 years. Mm. We did great business yeah, it and, and opportunities changed on us. But at the same time is that business could have been stronger if at the time I would have been more open to, I need somebody to run the business aspect of this while I develop yeah. the product yeah. itself. A, you, a maintainer. A maintainer. We just created yes. a new phrase. Yeah. So you can go and create. Right. And, 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 and feed into the team, you yes. know, that that's where your sweet spot is. So no, I, I would not say by any stretch, 18 year run is unbelievable. <laughs> in that business, it really sure. is. In and, any business, but yes. Yeah. And so, so tell me about maybe toward the end, if, if you're willing to share, like what, what happened in the end that like brought you to deciding, you know what, I, I'm going to go do something I know I can make an impact with. Well, I, I like to say it was God kind of smacked me upside the head. And and the reason I say that, that it was not just circumstantial, it, it was unbelievable circumstances. We were doing really good. Yeah. And we had on the books, we were about to start a job two weeks out that was going to be the biggest job we'd ever done. Alongside of that is we had another job that would have been about the third or fourth biggest job we would have ever done. And then we had another job that was 
a pretty good sized job that was going to start in about a month or so. And we were lined up, getting it ready, doing all these things. And I get a phone call in the smallest job and they called and they said, Hey, we decided not to go ahead with the renovation. We decided we're going to buy a house. Well, what do you do? You, you know, you, you have to do the renovation, house. right? Yeah, and, right? And some people right. say, well, they, didn't they give a deposit? Yeah, but other than expenses I incurred because of it, I'm, I'm not going to, no, I'm not punishing you for that, yes. right? And then another one called and said, hey, they're doing the master suite in their kitchen. And they said, what are the chances we're done by Christmas? And this was in October and we hadn't even started, or end of September, we hadn't even started yet. I'm like, the chances are zilch. I mean, we're not, we're not. And they're like, well, then we want to wait till next year because we got family coming in. And then like, okay, well, we still have this big one. We still had the big one. We still had the Mac Daddy one, you know, all right. And we could just focus on that and get it done. And the very next day, phone call comes in. We're not sure what the bonus situation is going to look like this year with all the changes. And we'd really like to just be able to pay it cash and have the money in hand when we start. So we're going to wait until March. And yeah. so what, we, we had two weeks about, of work left, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you have That's to all. wind down to be able to take on those three huge jobs. Right. Right. In, in order to get it. And th- so, so how long a time did you get the first phone call to the third phone call? Four days. <laughs> oh my God. And, so, and, and the first one was no panic at all because it was the smallest one. It was actually right. even kind of a relief. Like, how are we going to, these are three very yeah, yeah. intense jobs. Right. So we were like, all right, cool. And yeah. then it was three days, we got the second call. And then the next day, we got the third call. Yeah. So, but the last two jobs went in a matter of two days. And we just, okay, what are we going to do? And, you know, I brought, I brought it to my prayer group the very next morning. So I know that was on a Wednesday because prayer group for me is on a Thursday. Got it. And got so it. that Thursday morning, I brought it to them. And I didn't say I was looking for a job. I just, please pray for us. Yeah. That afternoon, I get a phone call from one of the guys in the group, Steve, and he says, hey, I hope you don't mind, but I told this guy, he said he was looking for a quality manager, and I told him, you know, you need to talk to David Wooten. And I'm like, no, I appreciate it, I guess. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah, you're correct. You're still- 15 minutes yeah, later, yeah. this guy, Josh, calls me, and, and then we go through the interview process, and four or five days later, I get an offer, uh, and, and I just felt like God just said, Stop go here. Yeah. And what's funny, part of the light bulb of what we've been talking about and getting to that moment of it's who you impact is Mm -hmm. today, my focus of my job every day is to help 150 people, both individually and collectively be better to help them find ways to connect within themselves, not just to produce a better product for money. Yeah. We got to do that for the company to stay, to survive and to stay healthy but how to be better people, how to interact with each other better, how to handle the situations of life along with work to be able to be at work when you need to be and be able to handle things. And, and I get comments the other day we were sitting at a, you know, we, sometimes we pour concrete in the middle of the night because it's so hot. Right. Yeah. yeah, Correct. And we're on a job site and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to a guy and he starts talking to me about David, man, you being here, I realize I need to improve my relationship with God, you know? And so what I do has an impact. What we all do has an impact, whether we like it or not. No doubt about it. So, so watching what we do. That's another light bulb. (laughs) That's great. No matter, no matter whether we know it or not. And, and, and so that impact, and we had a great conversation. We'll get all the details of it, but we had a great conversation about it. And little did he know, it was exactly what I needed to hear. It was a reminder to me of why I'm stepping on these grounds. Right, and right. yes, we got to get the concrete right. Yes, we got to get the measurements, the depths. The, this, it's unbelievable how much goes into sure. laying a concrete at that, at that size and that level. But we got to get all that right. But we got to get this right. We got to get the- If you don't get the person right, person right. Hey, that, that's exactly right. Yep. I, in, in my company, my slogan or tagline is, as people grow, companies grow. And if, because if we're not developing both personally and professionally, we're just going to a job. We're just surviving the day. Right. And that's not what it's all about. Dude, I, I think you've, uh, I, I love the David Wooten Inc., you know, right. and, and we're all just you Inc., right? Right. Um, I love that. And I love that it, it has taken 
a, a lifetime to get where you are. And I think you're in the right well, I'm place. Hopefully, I'm hoping it's less than three quarters of a lifetime, but you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, you got a ways to go. Yeah. But, but we, we it's have, taking a while, though. It's we taking a while. We have to go okay. through what we have to go through to get where we are. And then if you're going to continue to have a, an impact on individuals and, and teams and, and companies and even jobs at your job site, you're doing what you need to be doing. So it's you know, huge. It's, you know, you say that you, the go through what we have to, and I get myself in trouble sometimes <laughs> because people will be talking about how hard something is in their life, the trouble they're going through in the moment, and they're being vulnerable. They're putting it out there. Yeah. And I, I just can't help but smile. Like, oh, I can see the beauty coming. It's coming. Just yeah, keep yeah, paying yeah. attention. Keep working. Let's go. Right. And I understand you're hurting. I, I, not that I've been exactly where that person or whatever. Trust me, you know my story. I've, yeah. I've been in a lot of hurt in my life. And every one of those things, I, I don't know that I'd go back and change any of them. Because the blessings that come out of paying attention and learning from what we've been through have elevated me in a sense of, in the way that I see life. Yeah. In the way that yeah. I see life. So what's up for uh, Dave and Davey Wooten? Because I love your wife too. Yeah, yeah. She's very entrepreneurial herself. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's she's working for a designer right now and she is, they can't say enough about her. I mean, she's- She's so she, talented, man. She, 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 and she likes running a business. Yeah. Yep. That maintainer we're talking about her. Yeah. She wants to be that person for somebody. I'm blessed. Yeah, good. I, dude, I'm, I'm so blessed. We've had a lot of problems in our marriage and we've had a lot of wonderful moments in our marriage. Mm -hmm. There has never been a moment that I thought she's going to just up and run yeah, she, and go she's or make you. me she, up and go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That this is, this, we're committed yeah. and we got to figure this out. She's finding joy in what she's doing right now. And obviously then me finding joy in what I'm doing, all that relates to better life around the house. Mm -hmm. We're doing more. Um, we're going to take a vacation this summer and not accept phone calls. That is such good news. I can't tell you. The, I can't. Cause we were saying, well, since our business, so 18, 19 years, yeah. no. Cause when I worked for the company before that, I had to bring my phone with me and do meetings on my laptop and do all that stuff. Where, but we're both in a position. She may have to take one or two, but it's it nothing. It it basically no, none. dude. You've already committed. I've already no committed. Phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, Davey. <laughs> yeah, to, tell Davey she's already committed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, and and her company is very good about that too. That family yeah. life is family life, you know, yeah. and and doing it. So we're so excited about that. We're going to take a week and go away and 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 like I'm giddy about it. Like I don't yeah, even. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, you should be. I don't even you comprehend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. I wouldn't watch the news. I wouldn't oh, no. take a phone call because yeah. the world's going to be here when you get back, brother. Oh. That, that is so good. Well, for me, my job, the great thing about my job is that anything that happens that I have to be involved in can be reported. And it's not like I can come down from where I'm going to be and, and get, you know. Yeah, correct. And so I still have two cell phones because of having the business or whatever. So that cell phone's just going to sit on the charger at the house so it's ready when I get back. I love it. I and, love it. Yeah. People talk about balance all the time. I, I don't know what that means, to be honest yeah. with well, you. Well, I, I, I don't know. I had Ter Tara Bienvenue was on one time, and her whole episode was called Balance is a Lie. You, you right, know, I mean? right. That's kind of how she right. started. And you're always a little out of balance, but it's either here or down or up this side and down on the other. I mean, so what is balance? What is balance? For me, that's... That's a good question. That's what I want to answer. I what balance is, is where are my priorities and are my actions in line with my priorities? Mm -hmm. All right. So if my actions are not in line, if my priority, if I say my priority is my family, it's one thing to work a lot to provide for my family. Yep. It's another thing to work so much that I have nothing for them when I get home and I don't make any time to separate that and do it at all. Correct. Then I'm lying about my priorities. C correct. Because, you know, we are what we do. And, and so it's making sure that we know what our priorities are and then it's making sure that we do things according to that. When COVID hit, we lost our customers at that time too. Mm -hmm. So that's why we weren't in a position when this time happened to just go, oh, well, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. that time we were able to. And, and, and so 
we lost all our customers and we got together and we decided, and you know about this, Davey and I got together and we got on the board and said, okay, what's the purpose of our company? And then we said, wait, hold on. What's the purpose of our marriage? To honor God, right, is, is first of all, that's to us, that's what a marriage is, period. To honor God and then it's to help others. Yeah. That through our marriage, through who we are, is to help others. We have to be doing that. If we're not doing that, regardless of what our jobs are, regardless of anything else, then we're not using our marriage to its to what we believe its purpose is and, and doing that. And then back to the quote that I started with about the purposes, I'm going to misquote it now, but the, yes. about, uh, the, the purpose is not what we do, but the impact through what we do. Mm-hmm. We, have to, we have to be willing to look at that and be honest about, are we doing that? Nothing gets me to a place of discontent faster than being complacent about my purpose. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Nothing. Because you, you said it's not, it's not about what we say. It's about what we do. Yes. Y- you know, and, and action, <laughs> that action speaks louder than words. Man. Action. Yeah. I love it. It's one of the things I've adapted is this and doing it with the company is this voice of intentionality. Uh huh. Have you ever read the book, Turn the Ship Around? Mm -mm. It's about a submarine captain. And the real quick of it is, is he gets orders that in a year, he's going to captain one of the brand new subs, right? So he gets into reading everything about, he knows, I mean, he knows how far every nut and bolt's supposed to be turned, what tool, the whole deal. Two weeks before his commission to that sub, he gets orders moving him to this other sub that's not like that one at all. Oh, no. He gets on that sub. He gives his first order. He hollers out his order. Something like, you know, a three-quarter speed. And the XO hollers out, three-quarter speed. And the guy at the, at the components hollers, three-quarter speed. And nothing happens. So he goes, three-quarter speed. And do it again. Down the line. Nothing happens. He looks at the XO. He goes, do, do you just not feel it in this thing? He goes, no, sir. There's no three-quarter speed on here. And he's like, what? And so it brought him in this series of realizing he didn't have time to become the guy who knew everything. Yeah. But he needed the feedback. And so what he did is he would say, we give orders in the sense of this is where we're trying to go. And you come back with, so I intend to and tell you what the actions are that you think will get us to that point, And then we can concur on that yep, correct. and move forward. Correct. Right. And so the language of I intend to, I intend to. Yeah. Dude, that's one of those, for me, a light bulb moment, right? That's, that's a, it, that it is a light bulb moment. It's, I intend to. And when you get your quote unquote subordinates, right? You get your team to act in that way. It's a way of bringing them to that idea of always have a solution. Yep. But we don't always have a solution. Sometimes the solution is, you know, Jeff, you're my boss and I got a problem. So I intend to get some direction from you because because I'm tapped out at the moment. Yeah, correct. And that's okay. Yeah. Right. So I yeah. that I intend to that it helps with intentionality when we're well, doing and, and it makes the outcome that you desire clearer. You have yes. a clearer vision. You communicate it well and then you collaborate and make it the plan. Yeah. And then you execute. I mean, that that's the key to it is the action you're talking about. It's what we do. And so, uh, yeah, I think if you're more clear, that's a very that's a, gonna, you're going to get a lot of light. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. So it's called Turn the Ship Around. Turn the Ship Around. I, I can't. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the show yeah, notes. Find, man. find so it. That, that's uh, yeah, great. I'll get the name wrong. There's a couple yeah. of guys I've been listening to. So, yeah. That's uh, great. Yeah. It's, and I did a class the other day. We couldn't work at some of our sites on Friday because the state didn't want any work being done. Mm. And so I, some of the guys came in and I did a class for them on this thing that I've developed for our company called the Four P's. And it's plan, prepare, perform, and punch. And the performance, like the execution stage, the punch is the review and and make sure that you did what you thought you were going to do, right? And I love that. One of the guys who's I knew from high school, right? He's our safety guy, and he came into the to the class late, and he asked a question while we were summarizing reviewing something, Mm -hmm. and I started to answer the question. I went wait, and I called on one of the young guys in the class, and I said, Matt, what what do you have to say to that? And he not only did he come back and give kind of like, okay, I heard what you said, mm-hmm. but he did it away where he used the language. He s- said, so when this happens, uh, I go back and I say, I intend to, 
And da, 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 da. That is and, huge, yeah, right? And and it was yeah, it was a, that was a great pat on the back moment for me. That, I'm, that's I'm a, take that's it. a really big one. And 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 here's where what I get out of that. You made it so stinking simple, right? With the four P's and, right. and the sequence of the P's. You made it simple. It's it's adult education, and and a lot of it is about simplicity and actually getting him to do it. Taught the rest of the people one. He can call him anytime. I better be listening. But, so that's but where my that, background that comes into play, though, huge. because my background of facilitating versus, you know, most training in corporate America today is lecture. Yeah, correct. Now, maybe not people you hire out, but within the companies themselves, yep. it's lecture. And and the way that most people check for understanding, which I think is just when you see it, it's like, how have we been doing that? Is they go, Jeff, you understand what I'm saying? So what's your response going to be, Jeff? And go, oh, yeah. Yeah. My head's going to go up and down. <laughs> you don't know if you even do. You may yeah. not. I surely don't know whether or not right. you do. I ask, uh, and this is kind of an extreme example of that. We have some Hispanic guys that work for us. Mm-hmm. All legal, yes. Uh, and <laughs> and but this one guy in particular, I'm showing him how to do this application that we created on the phone. And so I, I said, you understand? Yes. Big smile. Yes. I said, oh, really? Yes. I said, what's your name? Yes. <laughs> that's said, hilarious. And look, hey, that's no offense against him. No. Uh-uh. He understands English better than I understand Spanish. So, you know, who am I? But, okay, but we need to make sure we can't just ask that you understand. And what I've found is, one, using that language of intentionality and, and, and saying I intend to start with helps. Yeah, yeah. Two, knowing it's a two-way street. That if I'm if I'm in the leadership position and you're in the subordinate position, it's your responsibility too. That if I go, hey Jeff, do you understand? I think I do. This is what I heard you say. Yeah, exactly. Right. We both got to. Or we, ask we, him. We both tell me. It. Tell me. Or as the leader, to better is to go. Okay, so you're going to be hitting that target for me, right? Yes. How do you plan to get there? There you go. And I'd like the how do you plan to get there? Because that's even more than what did I say. It's. You, what are you doing in reference to what I said? These are the intentions, and how, what do you intend to do to yeah, get there? To yeah. get there, dude, this is great. Yeah, this that's, is good stuff. <laughs> it's all, it's all. It, well, you know, we've we've talked business, you know, for a long time, and yeah. and and I love it. It, I, go, it goes back to your entire education in, during your journey. You you you've prepared you to be right where you are. How do you try to leave? The, like, what is your intention? to leave people different and better just because they came in contact with you? First of all, I'll go back to the intentionality. I have some experiences in my life, as you know of, meeting a homeless man and in a very small interaction, changed my life. Changed my life. You hear the voice? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Changed your life, right? Just from, and all I had to do was be in that moment. Yeah. You know, as, as a man of faith, I believe God is past, present, and future all at the same time. As a human, I'm only present. So it's the only place I can meet him. It's the only place I can be doing his will. It's the only be- place I can be fulfilling my purpose is in this moment. And so if I take my day and when I go out with the intention of loving the person that's in front of me, I think that's the best opportunity for, make, for me to have an impact or for God to have an impact through me. Or however it works and it's and and i get it he can have an impact through me he can also show people hey don't do that you yeah. know right yeah. Yeah. i'm gonna try hard to be on the side where he says watch watch this guy repeat repeat some of the things that he does i i look at the and I'm not gonna get over religious on you but i look at the the life of christ and i think this applies to anybody anyway and you know we talk about forgiveness one of the things i've done since my father not like physically or whatever. He did some things that hurt our family. As I began to pray for forgiveness, and then once I forgave him, I began to pray to forgive whoever hurts me next. Mm. And knowing today that I'm going to forgive the next person that hurts me already makes that possibility of that bad interaction to have some hope in it, to have some love in it, to have something about it that's positive, even though it may be hurt for me. And it doesn't mean I'm going to automatically go, Ooh, thanks. I'm glad you hurt me. Yeah, yeah, right. Sure, no, sure. It, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be pissed. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to be hurt. It doesn't mean it, but it does mean I know that even though I'm feeling those things, 
that I'm going to come to a point where I forgive that person. I can start on that on immediately. I can start on it before it happens and doing those things. So the action of loving who's in front of me and knowing that I will forgive is how I go into my day believing that I'm going to have the best impact possible on those that I meet. I'm going to do something I've never done in a year of episodes. We're going to end on that light bulb moment. That's good. Thanks so much for tuning in to I Finally Get It. For more information about David and what he's got going on, visit our show notes. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. We also just started creating 20-minute growth strategies. These are lessons that we're going to teach once a month for 20 minutes. To find out how you can sign up to be on the advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. If you're an entrepreneur or business owner and you have a light bulb moment that would help another entrepreneur, please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com. <laughs>